So here are top 10 productivity tips for you as a SME business owner that will help you create exponential growth for you and your business in 2023. So watch this video till the end. Make sure you watch it all the way because I'm going to be giving you some solid productivity hacks in today's video. So one of the biggest challenges for business owners is managing their time and how can they stay on top of their game to make sure that they're productive throughout the day, that they are focused throughout the day and then they are taking their business to the next level because their time is limited their time is always in demand if not in demand by their customers it's in demand by their team if it's not in demand by the team is in demand by their consultants if it's not in consultants it's something else if it's not anything else it's a crisis it's a problem business owners are constantly involved in addressing big issues in their business right and even small issues and that's where the time that they have gets a very challenging to manage the fact is that your business stops producing results when you stop producing results. So to keep the machine running, you need to be productive to make sure that you create significant growth in your business. So watch this video till the end if that's something you're serious about. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button for more business growth content. So let's not waste any more time and get right into it. So the first thing, have a clear start and stop to each and every single day in your business and life. While most business owners understand the benefits of starting early, no one, pretty much no one cares about having a clear stopping time of the day. And this is exactly where things overlap between their personal and professional lives and it leads to massive burnout and depression in some cases, right? Now, when I started my journey as a business owner, this is exactly the path that I was following. I have worked in my family business in the factory till 3 a.m., 4 a.m., but without seeing any benefit to the customer, to the business or even to me. And what that meant for me was I was frustrated, I was angry, I was miserable every single day, I had no energy, I mean I felt like I was burning out every single second of the day. So when you set a deadline to finish your work, your mind automatically finds ways to be more efficient, your brain starts working in that direction and it literally works like magic. Having a clear end to your day is as important as having a clear start to your day. It helps you remain productive, it helps you remain focused and it helps you get the most done in a limited amount of time. Otherwise, there is, if there is no boundary to your time, is uh, you can keep working forever till 11 a.m., 1 a.m., 2, 2 a.m., 3 a.m. or whatever it is. How many hours you want to work, but work will never finish and that's what it is. I mean, if you're running a business, the work will never finish because if the work is finished, that means maybe your business is finished. And not only that, when you prioritize your personal life, when you draw a clear boundary between your professional and personal lives, what that does is it gives your mind and body time to unwind, time to relax, time to rest and recover and attack the next day with the maximum amount of energy, focus and productivity that you can bring to the table. So it makes a phenomenal difference in your business and life and the quality of work that you produce every single day. Now number two, running a business requires a lot of energy. So make sure you are giving yourself a decent amount of break during lunchtime. Now this may sound a little bit strange or goofy or simple or easy or whatever it is, but if you are someone who starts your day early, let's say at 5 a.m., then by 12 p.m. you have spent about seven hours of your day already. Now we don't realize this, right? We take it for granted, but that's a serious amount of time, the big chunk of your day that has already gone. For the average person, this is probably happening around 3 p.m. or 4 p.m., all right? So there's a big difference. You've spent a big chunk of your day already by 12 p.m. That means your body has expended a lot of energy by that time. Your mind and body need space uh, to recover, to rest and recover. So give yourself a decent enough lunch break. I'm not saying take hours off, but balance it in a manner that works well for you, right? Because uh, let me t share a personal story with you. I was all about quick 10 minute lunches. I was proud of them. I used to talk about them. I used to show off about them. But it, the fact is that after those 10 minute lunch breaks, I used to feel exhausted. I was miserable. I was frustrated. I couldn't produce any work. I, I would struggle to keep my eyes open. It just didn't work for me, right? And I have spoken to numerous business owners, right? Who have had similar challenges, who find being productive after lunch is very difficult. So as a business leader, you need to make sure that you're conserving energy, that you are understanding, you're aware of your energy levels. Now, the easiest way to do this is to give your mind and body a considerable amount of break uh, during lunchtime, because that's like, that marks the half time for each and every single day and that's a good time for you to rest and recover and get ready to attack for the next part of the day because in any case you have used up uh, pretty much majority of your energy uh, and creative uh, creativity in the first half right so the second half is about sustaining that and making sure that you remain productive you remain focused and you are not kind of struggling like i used to do 
So, and here's a millionaire bonus tip. Take mini recharge breaks throughout the day. I'm not saying that get up every five minutes or get up every 15 minutes, but every now and then take a mini break. Now, number three is going to be a tough one. And that is turn off all notification on your devices, on your computer, every single where on all your softwares. If you begin to track how many times your devices and your softwares notify you, it's going to be shocking. It's not going to be in the tens or twenties. It's going to be easily in the hundreds. Now imagine being interrupted hundreds of times every single day while you're trying to focus, be productive and grow your business. It's not going to be a great result in the end. And honestly, it took me a while to implement this. It was kind of on and off and I kind of struggled with it. And I was like, how will I, you know, uh, stay on top of everything? If I'm not notified, how will I respond to my customers X, Y, Z, right? But honestly, now I've reached a stage, the moment my devices notify me or any of my software tells me, hey, you need to turn off notifications so that you're in tune uh, with whatever is happening on the platform or on this app or on that uh, device or whatever it is, I do not hesitate to say no. Because please understand, all these devices and these softwares, whatever you're using that always notify you, they want you to stay on that platform. They want you to be on that software because that's their way of keeping your attention. And so that you can buy more from them, you can consume more for them. And that's why those notifications exist, not just to uh, keep you in the loop of what's going on. Honestly, it makes no difference. Now that I've been doing it for a few years, you do not miss anything. If you organize yourselves properly, and I'm going to be talking about this. So again, stay tuned till the end uh, in, a couple of, in the following tips, where if you actually follow this, you will see that you get more done and you produce more quality of work rather than uh, just being distracted at all times by getting notified hundreds of times in a day. Now, number four, set a schedule for every single day instead of rolling into every single day without having a, set, a specific agenda. Right? When you do not have a plan or a goal for the day, what you're doing is you're kind of going uh, in the direction wherever the wind blows you. That means you're drifting along. That means there is no specific uh, direction. There is no specific destination that you want to get to at the end of the day. Right? You're, basically, what, you're, what, what that means is your time does not belong to you. It belongs to everyone else and everything around you. This is definitely the most distracted way of working and does not help you in creating growth in your business. It does not help you going in any specific direction. So plan your day to the team. Make sure that you have a specific agenda of what you want to get done, how you want to get it done, right? Uh, so that you have a sense of achievement every single day. Just having that sense of achievement is a huge, huge, huge uh, motivator, a huge energy component that comes in for you as a business leader, right? And here's another bonus tip for you. Make sure that your calendar is full of activities that help you work on your business, not in your business. More about this later. Now, number five is batch your work every single day. What that means is instead of checking emails throughout the day, set a specific time slot where you are going to check all the emails that have uh, come to you till that time and then respond to those emails in that time. Now, what happens is every time you choose to switch between tasks, let's say you're focusing on a certain activity, let's say you're doing marketing or you're doing sales activities and suddenly an email comes and you switch over to that task. You are not just borrowing time, but you're borrowing attention. It seems like you're easily switching between tasks, but what is actually happening is there are always residual thoughts from task one to task two and then back to task one. So while it may seem like you might have seamlessly switched from one task to a quick email and then back to it within a minute or two or three, but it actually costs you a lot more than two, three minutes because as you were deeply working into task one and you switch to task two, which is a email that you need to respond it to because you got notified because remember you didn't switch off the notification, what I mentioned earlier, what that does is that now you're, fo you're trying to bring your attention from task one to task two, you get present to task two while you're trying to disconnect from task one, you says you kind of send a reply to that email and now you're switching back to task one but you still have some residual thoughts about the email that you sent. All right. So that deep focus, that deep energy, you know, I mean, the productivity that you had in task one takes a long time to bring back because you've just shifted. Now, imagine if you're doing this hundreds of times during a day, right? And it's easily happens because all of us get a few hundred emails every day now, right? That's the norm. So be very careful about this. Be present to this. Be aware of this because it takes a lot of effort for your brain to get back in the zone because it's, multi uh, it's processing multiple things. We're not supposed to be multitaskers. We're supposed to focus on single tasks and do deep work. That's, that's, that's when you produce the best work. So stay focused and batch your work. And I want to give you an example, right? For example, every Saturday is content producing day for me. It's like I strictly, deeply work only on producing valuable content for you. And I stay away from any kind of notifications, distractions in my business and life. 
so that I can do this for you. All right, number six is a bit strange and that is exercise to be productive in your business and life. Now, I have been doing yoga for over 14 years now and I have been on this intense physical fitness journey for the last two years. And guys, I cannot even begin to tell you the impact it has had in my business and life. I cannot even begin to quantify the impact it has, ha it has had in my business and life. The amount, the, the productivity that I have right now, the focus that I have right now, the ability to execute at speed that I have in my business and life right now is I have never witnessed it for myself. When your body is moving, your mind is moving and when your mind is moving, your ability to execute is absolutely phenomenal. So do not take this one lightly. It might be strange, but exercise is phenomenal. It just It's not just for your business, right? It's also for your life. As a business leader, like I said earlier, your business requires a lot of energy to run, to manage, to grow. And staying exercise just keeps you razor sharp. It keeps you focused. It's, it, you know, when, when push comes to shove, when your business is demanding, when your life is demanding, this is the number one thing that is going to help you uh, stay ahead of the game, stay ahead of your competition and tackle any situation with ease. So exercise every single day. Now, number seven, continuing the theme of strange things, food is medicine for the body. And as the previous one, I again cannot tell you the impact this particular thing has had on my productivity and focus in my business and life. You remember when I mentioned earlier that I was struggling to keep my eyes open after lunch, you know, and I was not productive and I was not, you know, I mean, I was, I was just struggling. It was, I just, had, I was exhausted all the time, right? And even though I was eating normal home cooked meals, but that meal was not serving me. It was not giving me more energy. It was taking more energy from me. Right? I was not particularly eating junk food or unhealthy food or heavy foods, but it was just not working for me. So what you eat matters, right? Because food is medicine for the body. I'm almost 40 years uh, old right now, guys. And the energy levels that I have as compared to what I had 10 years ago is 10 times. I'm not kidding. I was 10 years younger, but my energy was 10 times lower than what I have right now. So it makes a serious impact on your productivity and focus of what you eat throughout the day. So pay attention to what you're putting in your body. Pay attention to the impact it creates for you. The easiest way to tell is this is actually after lunch because that is, again, like I mentioned earlier, that you have depleted most of your energy by that time. And what you put in your system will tell you uh, how productive or how energetic you are after that halfway mark during every single day. Now, number eight is a game changer for me, and that is to switch to a sit-stand desk, a desk that you can switch between sitting and standing positions easily. I switched to this configuration about three years ago, and at first, I only was doing it for my coaching calls with my clients, right? The, um, they could experience that the energy and focus that I was bringing to the calls was, a, was much higher as compared to when I was doing my calls sitting, right? So much so that a client of mine commented that, hey, uh, ever since you have switched to standing meetings, it's... Uh, it's been phenomenal and the kind of energy and focus you're bringing is just absolutely amazing and he absolutely loved it, right? And now it's a regular feature in my business. In fact, I scripted this entire script for this content, for this video, I did it in standing mode, right? And the energy, the content, the quality that I could bring to the table was just absolutely amazing. So this makes a big difference. You may not realize it, but when you stand and work, it's not just about the energy, but somehow it's, it's just magic in the body, right? I mean, the brain starts firing in a great uh, manner. You bring out some of the best ideas and your productivity just shoots up. So keep switching between sitting and standing positions, right? When you want to do quality work, then when you want to deep dive, try standing and working for at least uh, an hour, uh, one hour, I would say, and watch the magic unfolded right in front of your eyes. Now that brings us to number nine. Now many years ago, I, I signed up for my first ever business coaching program. And one of the key things I learned over there was this concept called out of office. What that meant is that you're supposed to do your work by not sitting in your office, but going to a coffee shop. Now at first I was really skeptical. I was like, okay, this is uh, weird. But when I tried it, it was a game changer for me. Because you know, when you're in your office, you, it's the most distracted place. People want your attention, emails want your attention, notifications want your attention, uh, business issues want your attention, and there's simply no way in that environment for you to stay productive and make the best use of your time. When you actually disconnect from that environment and sit out of office in a coffee shop, you're able to deeply focus on the work that you have to do, right? And that for you as a business leader, as a business owner, is to work on your business, not in your business. 
Now, unfortunately for me, I was not able to continue this habit because over the last three years, pandemic happened and it, uh, you know, it's just not possible to go to coffee shops. And then I was a bit skeptical of going out and all that stuff. I'm sure some of you experienced the same thing, but uh, I think it was a recently, a couple of months ago that I ended up working from a coffee shop. I was there for two or three hours and the level of productivity, focus and energy was just phenomenal. It blew me away. I kind of had forgotten, right? Because I had adapted to this new pandemic way of living. So much so that, you know, I used to have a membership to a coffee shop where I used to regularly, uh, that I used to regularly work out of, that I have gone back and renewed that membership so that I can go back to the good old days of uh, spending out of office time and working on my business, right? So uh, when I was running my family business, when I was running an, uh, when I was running my factory, a manufacturing factory with about 500 people in it, uh, I used to work three days out of the office and I produced some of the best quality of work in my business and life. And I'm talking about analysis. I'm talking about business growth. I'm talking about sales. These are some of the, these are some of the greatest things that I produced uh, when I was working out of office but because it just allowed me to focus on producing quality work and not just like some rubbish transactional work that I would do in my business from a day to day on a day to day basis. So this is a so working out of office is a truly powerful one and thanks to my coach Rahul Jain for teaching this to me. And that brings us to number 10 last but not the least your time is the most valuable resource that you have but we simply do not understand this simple concept. Your relationship with time needs to be understood by you in a deep manner so that you can use it to create real value in your business and life and avoid doing the activities that do not add value in your business and life. Now, don't get me wrong, guys. I'm not calling for perfection. I make plenty of mistakes. I'm human too. I've messed up my schedule a lot of times. I've messed up my calendar a lot of times. You know, I've messed up using my time a lot of times. You know, it's, uh, it's just part of life. We are all human. But what I'm trying to say is that now that I've deeply understood the value of my time, I deeply understand how to use my time. I now know that whatever I use my time on will expand in my business and life. Now, what do I mean by that? Let's take, for example, uh, a common challenge every business owner has, and that is running the day to day operations of their business, managing all the things that are coming their way. Right. So if I choose to spend time on that in my business and life, then that is precisely what is going to expand in my business and life because that is, that's where I'm spending most of my time. I'm going to go deeper and deeper and deeper into that subject, right? I'm going to be involved in the day to day operations of my business. And I've done this because when I came into my family business, this is the only expectation that was set for me. You have to run the factory. You have to manage the day to day operations. You have to get into every little detail of that business. Now, while I understand that is important and maybe in the earlier days when I joined the business, but as I got the, as I got more and more involved in the business, as I learned the business more and more, I, that was not what is going to lead me to creating growth in my business. G creating growth in your business is a separate activity altogether. Now, let me explain this. If you are running the day to day operations of your business and you're deeply involved in it, that means that you are not giving time, significant amount of time to marketing and sales activities. That means you're disconnecting from that activity. And what that does is not only create short term damage for your business, but also long term damage. Now, let me explain when I'm not involved in the marketing and sales of my business. That means I'm not connecting with my customers. That means I'm not connecting with new prospects, new leads that are coming to the coming into my business, or I'm not even generating new prospects or new opportunities for my business. And when I'm not doing that, I'm disconnected from the problems that my market is facing, whether it's existing customers or whether it's new customers in the pipeline. And when I'm disconnecting from that part, that means I cannot solve their problems. That means I cannot innovate in my business because you can come up with the best idea, best product or best solution in your business. But if your target audience doesn't want it, your target market doesn't want it, your marketplace sees no value in it, you will not be able to sell it. And you would have spent all this time, money and energy and resources into uh, creating and developing this amazing thing, but nobody wants it. What are you going to do with it? So in this hyper paced world, I cannot tell you how damaging it is for you and your business when you're not connected with the people that help you grow your business. And that is customers and future customers. That means leads. That means prospects. The competition is super high out there and your competitors are waiting to pounce upon any attention deficit from you. So if you are not paying attention to your marketplace, they will 
eat up your market share. And that's not what you want. That's not how you're going to grow your business. So staying connected with your marketplace not only keeps you visible in front of them, but also establishes trust, grows that trust and creates deep connection between you and your marketplace. So use your time wisely, understand the proper use for it, understand that it can be used to create value and use it precisely for that instead of doing transactions in your business and life. So that's all I have for you today. I sincerely hope you found this video useful and you can use these productivity tips to create some serious growth in your business and life in 2023. Hit the like button if you did. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel to stay tuned for more content like this. This is Nikhil from Bulletproof Teams. Thank you so much for tuning in today.